Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shurai and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Biodiversity Act 2002. The law bans use of bioresource for commercial purpose without approval from the National Biodiversity Authority. To discuss the issue, I have with me Dr. Professor Swapn Kumar Datta, DDG Crop Science ICAR and Shalini Bhutani, Legal Researcher Campaign for Conservation and Community Control over Biodiversity. Now for the headlines. Government approval must for use of biodiversity resource. Use without approval incurs jail up to five years. The NBA empowered with powers of the civil court. The biodiversity law makes it mandatory for foreigners, non-resident Indians and corporates to seek approval from the government before using biological resource of the country. The law broadly defines biodiversity as plants, animals and microorganisms and their parts, their genetic material and byproducts, but excludes value-added products and human genetic material. There have been several incidents where entities abroad attempted to obtain patents on Indian bioresource. India had to contest the patent application of basmati rice and turmeric on the grounds of geographical indicators. Now, Biodiversity Act seeks to prevent such incidents from occurring. The law bans use of any bioresource for commercial purpose without approval from the National Biodiversity Authority established under the law. No biodiversity uh, uh, process can be strengthened without a participation of government. And this was recognized uh, first time in 1990, uh, 1988 forest policy. Uh, for the first time the uh, government said that uh, this will be an inclusive process. But our forest department and administration are not tuned to understand this because, because of the colonial legacy. They always feel people are the enemy, especially the poor people. The Biodiversity Act seeks to establish a three-tier system National Biodiversity Authority NB at the centre, State Biodiversity Boards SBB at state level and Biodiversity Management Committee BMC at local level. The approval of these bodies are required for use of any biological resource for research, commercial use, biosurvey, biotilization, transfer of research results and application for intellectual property rights IPRs. It is mandatory for non-citizens of India, non-resident Indians and institutions to take approval of the NBA. This is a law which for 10 years is in place. But today, there is hardly any awareness about the implication of this law and the purpose for which the law has been enacted. So you have a biodiversity authority, but it deals with only with respect to clearances, but not with respect to the larger issue of conservation of species, of habitats, of, of agricultural. The law was enacted in compliance with the Convention on Biological Diversity, which laid down a global agreement covering all aspects of biodiversity. The Convention on Biological Diversity was the key agreement achieved during the Earth Summit held in 1992. Munasanto along with its Indian seed partner Meko and several government institutions had access 16 varieties of brinjal in order to develop the BT brinjal. In response to this, the National Biodiversity Authority has launched a criminal prosecution against the Indian Sikh partner for alleged biopiracy. With camera person Virendra Subina Roy, Rajya Sabha TV. The provisions do not apply to collaborative research project, projects involving transfer or exchange of biological resource between institutions. My question to you, sir. First thing, from whom are we trying to protect our bioresource? And second, is whatever bioresource that we have, isn't it already being shared with the entire world? Do we have anything to protect? Yes, definitely. Still we have to protect. Protect means that to utilize it in a better way. It's mm -hmm. not just protection in situ or, or ex situ. 
the protection of biogenetic resources is very important for our future generation of crop developments and improvement of the, of the crops. Now, under the different acts, CBD and other international laws that are in place, and India is a signatory of majority of those laws. Under FAO designated material, we uh, supplied this material to different gene bank of uh, CGIR. Now, CGIR, along with India, they are ready or they are willing to share that material across the world. Majority of them basically for research purposes, but they can also use this material, which are FAO designated material for other utilization in the country. Mm -hmm. So this is already in place and which is for the good reasons of human welfare and for food security and for further crop development. I'll get in uh, uh, yeah. um, Shalini. Shalini, Ritwik made a point that this entire authority is more for the use of allowing and how to allow the bioresource, but does it fulfill the larger role which, is man which it is mandated with, which is of conservation? Do we right. see that happening? Well, in the last uh, 10 years of the legislation, uh, we have seen that conservation provisions are somehow made subservient to larger use uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Now, there has been a concerted effort to set up an institutional structure by which access to both biological resources and genetic material and traditional knowledge can be made available to industry Users. or for research, R&D requirements, whether that's for the pharma industry or for the biotech and life sciences uh, corporations. So the concern, the genuine legitimate concern from local communities is that, and particularly those who have their own capacities and their cultures and knowledge by which they conserve knowledge as well as resources at the local level, um, they are seeking a lot more protection and support from the officialdom uh, to take that forward. So we have, uh, in a sense, almost a lopsided implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, ha you have to understand that and locate this legislation and its implementation in the current political economy. Mm -hmm. We are in a bio era. Mm -hmm. That means biological resources and genetic matter has commercial value, Absolutely. actual or potential. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there is a politics, there is a global politics mm -hmm. of being able to access who accesses on, and on what terms. terms. And, and if you go back to the history of not only the act, but the parent international convention through which the act came about in India, then it's important to understand that in 1992, when the first Earth Summit Rio was held, and this idea was mooted to have a convention on biological diversity, it was essentially because countries in the south, that means mega diverse, bio rich countries, were raising the issue that bio piracy is happening. Yeah. Which means our knowledge and our resources are being used without consent. So now, government. So basically, the act does serve a purpose. That's where yeah. I'd like to uh, r respond that the fact that this legislation and its implementation is getting colored by the political economy, it means the only way in which we're looking at uh, our genetic wealth and our intellectual heritage is making it into a commercial product. That's the uh -huh. only way, blinkered way in which we're looking at it. And that's not how local communities view their local resources. Right. And that's why, uh, you know, where you sit determines your position on this legislation. If mm -hmm. you sit in an agricultural institute mm -hmm. uh, or in a private uh, scientific uh, setting, then you will view the same resource or plant as Potential. a gene. As a gene. Yes. But if you're sitting in a village, you're not looking at it as a gene. It's your, more use. your point of view is a more holistic uh, cultural use. It's, uh, you know, it's linked to the, the ethnobiology of yeah, that yeah, area. Yeah. So your perception of that same resource is very different from where you're looking at it. But this, this law actually goes by the perception what Dr. Datta absolutely, actually has absolutely. been making. Absolutely, and that's the struggle, and that's the negotiation. And which has to be achieved. We must engage ourselves on that negotiations and on profit sharing. But on, I that note, on that note, it's time to head into a break. When we come back, we will discuss the legal provisions provided in the Biodiversity Act.
Welcome back. Using bioresource without permission will be considered a violation for which the penalty is imprisonment up to five years. The National Biodiversity Authority has the powers of a civil court, allowing it to summon people if required. The law allows exemption of the section which has been involved in the conservation of biodiversity. It excludes local people and communities of the area, growers and cultivators of biodiversity and weeds and hakims who have been practicing indigenous medicine. They have um, knowledge about a certain use of a certain plant or have been developing native breeds of animals, have knowledge about the fish and the forests around them. And now that we are in the bio era, you know, and if you situate this whole knowledge in capitalism and in the global politics, then this knowledge and these biological resources on which this knowledge is based now suddenly become the green gold. Let's look at the powers of the National Biodiversity Authority NBA. It will have the powers of a civil court. It is empowered to summon and examining persons. NBA can call for production of documents. It can accept evidence on affidavits, examine witness, review its decision. In case approvals are not sought from National Biodiversity Authority NBA, there is a penalty of imprisonment up to 5 years and fine up to 10 lakh rupees. Not informing the State Biodiversity Board, the SPB may lead to imprisonment up to 3 years and fine up to 5 lakh rupees. Any violation of the law will incur a fine of up to 2 lakh for the first time. There's nothing, see, in terms of it, you know, in terms of criminal prosecution that we know, so far as the Biodiversity Act is concerned, there is only one that I am aware of. That was the case where, you know, two Czech scientists were caught with, you know, butterflies in Sikkim, uh, North Bengal and Sikkim, and they were prosecuted and are ultimately convicted under the provisions of the Biological Diversity Act. According to the National Biodiversity Authority, 25 states have set up biodiversity boards and 31,000 biodiversity management committees have been set up at local level in 14 states. If the local communities and the biodiversity management committee have any problem regarding the approval of the biological resources, they have no other way but to appeal before the High Court. With camera person Virendra, Subina Roy, Rajya Sabha TV. No person is allowed to apply for any intellectual property right in or outside India for any invention based on any research on a biological resource obtained from India without approval. So approval is what is required. Dr. Datta, coming to you and uh, what Shalini has been contesting is what glass are you wearing? Whether you're looking at the biodiversity resource as the one that is there being used by rural people or as it is being looked at by scientists and researchers and looking at the potential harvest that it could yield. Now, the point I wanted to ask you, is there, is uh, the National Biodiversity Authority mandated to keep track or database of the entire biodiversity resource that India has? Is there any agency? which actually is dealing with this activity and do we have such records enumerated for anyone to see, for the people to understand and see? I wish I can give a very positive answer. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm not. I cannot give you that answer that uh, we have the catalog. Right. The country is so rich in biodiversity and genetic resources and of course, NBA and Biological Diversity Act uh, has one objective as to Recall. make the awareness, make the conservation, make this, all these uh, things are in place. Accordingly, State Government Biodiversity Act as well as management uh, committees uh, have been constituted. So they're working. There are certain works uh, coming up. Many, some states are very actively working and some states they have are lagging. That, uh, some sort of things they, are, they still intend to do it, but uh, not that much uh, work has been done. Even the ethnobotanical uh, work long back started in India, Botanical Survey of India, Geological Survey of India, they have all this supposed to do it. They have done some work, but there is no comprehensive complete document. I understand that we cannot have a complete document, but at least a substantial document need to be made. 
Mm -hmm. And moreover, the important point is the awareness, the awareness among the, the tribals working with uh, traditional knowledge of ethnobotanical materials and, the, and that knowledge to be translated into the scientific matter, scientific cataloging, and then translating into a product or some profit uh, value, added, of value added product, materials. Yeah. But this entire things in a process, this has to be made. Mm -hmm. And the first important point is the awareness. And now, if we are not looking into that aspect carefully and seriously, and even we sh I would be happy to even engage those material in a collaborative program, research program, who are actively working on phytochemistry or phytochemicals, bioactive mm -hmm. compounds of our medicinal plants. We can tell thousands of medicinal plants of India, we have not made any drug discovery from our material. Mm -hmm. Is that the way we should be happy and proud that we are mega diversity country and we have huge material and we're we are, we just maintaining and conserving, trying to conserve it, even not conserving it? That's not the way that the rural tribals or the poor people would have any benefit of their traditional knowledge Guarding and their their maintaining their traditional knowledge unless they see any light of business or any light of any any kind of product development and utilization of that product in in, in if in we don't time. have a documented by a resource for anyone in this country to see what do you think is the implication of it I have concerns about how documentation is being done, particularly by the uh, official processes and government-sponsored processes. One is through reducing uh, the local level biodiversity management committee to only being a data provider. Mm -hmm. uh, we had hoped that uh, under section 41 of the act, which set up a biodiversity management committee, it would have larger powers and functions. And also, because India is seen as a promoter of democracy, uh, the challenge in implementing the Biodiversity Act is how do you effect a new kind of biodiversity governance, undoing the colonial history, undoing the kind of uh, controls that have been on local people's use and access to resources. And documentation uh, has been happening by local communities in their own ways, whether that's through culture, that's through song and dance. But official documentation is happening either through people's biodiversity registers, which is also in a pre-prescribed format made by scientists. So here mm -hmm. is the hierarchy of science. Who mm -hmm. will validate whose knowledge? Mm -hmm. The other Indian systems of medicines that are being documented are under the traditional knowledge digital library. Mm -hmm. Now both the PBRs and the TKDL are supposed to all come together and under a uh, digitalized uh, information, biodiversity information system. But who accesses that? The question is that you need all of this as evidence of prior art mm -hmm. when somebody else is seeking intellectual property rights on your knowledge or resources. Mm -hmm. So the bigger, larger fight is to challenge the IPR system itself okay. and say our traditional knowledge and our biological resources should not come under the IPR system. Mm -hmm. And that is something in our Patent Act. Section 3P says very clearly the traditional knowledge cannot be patented. Mm -hmm. But that's what your Indian law is saying. Your, the US uh, patent law is not recognizing that. It doesn't recognize prior art in an oral form. Yeah. And therefore the onus of documenting comes on a country and a society which has shared knowledge, which has kept it open, which is not documented. Mm. But we should be saying to a government like the United States government that you change your patent legislation and recognize our prior right as is. Mm -hmm. Instead, and that's the history of the interaction between the World Trade Organization Strips Agreement and mm. the CBD. Okay. Because by the time we implemented uh, our Biodiversity Act, India had already become a member of the World Trade Organization. Too late. So your Mr. implementation Moore. of the Biodiversity Act is, is linked with uh, your, you've, you've amended your patent legislation. I get it, I get it. Dr. Datta? We have to use our material. It's not whether what the US is doing, what uh, European EU are doing it. Uh, it's not, even today with, the, with, with a little bit of knowledge of certain things of bioactive compound, synthetic compounds can be generated uh, across the world and they mm -hmm. don't need to wait to get our material even mm -hmm. they can do it yeah. so unless we are using our material so we are not giving any benefit to our poor people or tribals or the traditional knowledge who are bearing that information mm -hmm. so i'm more emphasizing on the things what we should be actively doing and right. we should use it it's time for us to head into a break when we come back we will show you an interview with kanchi kohli a biodiversity researcher
Welcome back. My colleague Subina Roy spoke to Kanchi Kohli, a biodiversity researcher, and tried to get her point of view. And what is biodiversity and how does it affect the common man? Biodiversity, even though it actually you know, appears to be a very, very uh, technical term, it's, it's basically anything that's uh, it's, it's the diversity of life all around us. So in urban areas, it's the trees, it's the birds, it's, uh, it's the river that flows through the, through the city. In, in rural areas, it could be the forest which people are dependent upon, the wildlife habitats that we are talking about. So anything which is, represents the diversity of life is biodiversity and if you look at it broader, in a broader fashion, it then includes all our cultural connects, our livelihood connects with biodiversity. So very simply understand biodiversity is diversity of life, anything that's living, the food that you eat, the seeds, uh, seed diversity of the country. Ma'am, the act talks about, you know, preserving the traditional knowledge, which is like in the community level. So could you elaborate us on the bio biodiversity management committees which will implement See, as I mentioned, the biodiversity management committees are supposed to be set up at every village. It is an arduous task. I mean, it's very difficult to actually set up uh, committees at the bio, uh, village level when actually villages are themselves questioning what is it that we are going to get out of these committees. You, you're going to, we have actually set up forest level committees, panchayat level committees, so many committees have been set up. What is the new power or the stake that people will have by setting up these biodiversity management committees? There have been states where uh, biodiversity management committees have been set up through government orders and people don't even know that they are part of these management committees. Uh, I think the, the National Biodiversity Authority have themselves taken up an assessment of the biodiversity management committees, have come up with a whole range of recommendations that these committees will be only powerful if there is a decision making space or the, you know, the mandate for conservation is far more stronger. How do they plan to go about with that you know, benef benefit sharing factor thing? Like how will they identify who are the benefit claimers of a particular traditional knowledge? I think globally the issue of benefit sharing has reached no agreement. It is very difficult to identify who actually owns knowledge who owns, you know, uh, in ecosystems, when forest ecosystems cut across states, who really owns it. And when you, the moment you start getting into benefit sharing agreements with A or B individuals or A or B in, uh, villages, when there is same knowledge that is held somewhere else or, uh, or even within the communities, if you regard one farmer as the holder of knowledge and not the rest, it's likely to induce a lot of conflicts of what is considered to be commonly held heritage or commonly held uh, 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 knowledge systems. Any person who wishes to apply for a patent or any other form of intellectual property protection, whether in India or outside, must seek approval first. So the bottom line is, approval is required for each and everything. The point you were making, Dr. Datta, about biodiversity heritage. Yes, this is something very interesting. Um, I think there are several uh, places across the country that Koli Hill in Tamil Nadu, then Wenad in Kerala, and Koraput in Odisha, they are already declared as a heritage uh, site. The, it each has its own beauty of conservation and maintenance of those uh, cultivars, varieties, and also the traditional knowledge-based material. But uh, again, my question is, uh, of course, we should look even much more areas where that can be potentially heritage sites mm -hmm. across the country. There are many forest areas and other things which you may have already a discussion on that. But the medicinal plants... I think heritage plants, cannot be pockets of yeah. conservation. You know, because... It has to be holistic. Absolutely. I'll, come to, to, you. Yes. I'll come to you, Shalini. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dutta. But the question is to me, say, uh, Koraput, Odisha, there are certain heritage site has been maintained that to give a kind of a branded name. But I would like to see that one uh, to connect with uh, some kind of ecology, ecotourism and kind of things so that ultimately the benefit also goes to the local people who are conserving this one and their knowledge, like uh, if you go to US uh, where uh, the, the maize Nobel laureate, uh, Barbara McClinton, mm -hmm. I visited just to see her garden. So now, there is nothing there, but Barbara McClintock, while working with maize germplasm, that she discovered the jumping genes and kind of thing. Yeah. And the garden is maintained as a kind of heritage garden. garden. And you go there and pay tribute, and to see the history of the science, history of that material, germplasm conservation, etc., etc. I like to see Koraput or other those Evolve into something like, like that. that. So you go there, learn something, 
pay How to long do... will we take to actually get it, to that it, level? Government wants it. Government can do it in one year. Uh, Shalini, I'll uh, bring you in. You stressed on intergovernmental consultation, interministerial right. con consultation. And coordination. Is it actually happening? What well, is happening? Well, the National Biodiversity is making efforts to try and integrate biodiversity into all dif the functionings of different ministries. Exact status, not trying. Well, they're attempting. That's a question that you need to put to it's, the it's NBA and the Ministry of Environment and Forest, which is the mm -hmm. nodal governmental ministry. But we can't have just simply one desk or one authority in all of India to be able deciding to... Deciding for everyone. Not deciding, but being able to take on this large uh, you know, endeavor of conservation. Everybody has to get involved. You and I, whether it's in our lifestyles, in the choices that we make, in the products that we promote, in the kind of R&D that we endorse... All of this has implications on uh, conservation. And there are local communities which have their conservation practices, which too need to be given some kind of legal support. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have mainstream development. Is it happening? Do you see any agency trying to communicate or inform, educate people who are dealing with bioresources? I would say more interface discussion is required. I would say it's more required. of uh, people themselves. There's a lot of an active and vibrant non-governmental uh, sector which is working in this area for several years. And uh, there are local communities themselves, farmers themselves who continue to grow their traditional varieties uh, are in a way conserving on-farm in situ. Uh, so therefore, you know, at a, at, a, at a people's level, this thing is happening. I think the government uh, has to support that much more. Without actually understanding uh, the legal framework to uh, handle it. The people at the ground level cutting edge, do they understand the legal framework as it exists? Neither does the government understand uh, <laughs> the customary law and the actual soft law that already exists. Within uh, communities there, we have a tribal society which is based on biodiversity for lives and livelihoods. Of, uh, goes back to 10,000 years. That's our history. And this legislation is only 10 years old. In 2002, the act came. So Dr. Datta is pro development. He says they are also benefiting. Did they didn't? Well, if benefit means only money and being, uh, you know, only cash transfers or monetary claim, then we are losing a lot of the heritage that we are trying to protect through these pockets of biodiversity heritage sites. On that note, thank you, sir, and thank you, ma'am, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV.